Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So welcome everyone. I'm calling to order the September 12th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 2.03 p.m. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So I'm just gonna take a moment to do a sound check here, make sure we can all hear each other. So I will start with, welcome Yvonne. <laughs> can you hear us? Yes. Excellent. Okay. So you were the first on the sound check. You came in just in time. Uh, Dr. Shabazz. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Oh. You're echoing. <laughs> Your echo, echo, echo. <laughs> I'm still in the attendees. Ah, uh, okay. So because you're still in the attendees, that's what's happening is you're having an echo when you come on. So right. I've tried to move move you twice. I will try again. Yeah, that's interesting. I've never seen I can leave and come back. Do you want to try that? Um yeah. Okay, great. And let's see. Uh Hala, can you hear us? And let's see if we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, thank Perfect. you. Oh, thank well. you. And uh, Dr. Rhodes, can you hear us? I can hear. And we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Ms. Bridges. I can hear you in my little tiny screen. I can't make it big, but I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear uh, me? Yes. Okay. And just so you know, you appear at least on my screen, just like always. So okay. nothing, well, nothing I funny. I don't know why I here. keep holding up here, but that's great. Yeah, that's good. Um, and Pamela, can you hear us? And yes, I can hear you. And Dr. Shabazz should be back in that as a panelist. So he came in correctly. Yeah. Yes, I am. All right. Excellent. All right, so welcome. We have a really exciting meeting today. I mean, all of our meetings are exciting, but um, today's meeting is super exciting. Uh, and Brianna from um, the town is going to join us at 2.30. So uh, what Brianna will be doing is presenting our Engage Amherst page that we've been working on behind the scenes. Um, and we'll be asking you all for your feedback and for um, any recommendations for making changes or improving it. Uh, the hope is that we will be able to la launch our campaign um, at the block party, which is happening on Thursday. So we'll talk a little bit more about how that can all roll out when Brianna joins us. But before we do that, um, we are going to invite a very special guest to join us for a couple minutes. Um, he is in the attendees right now, and so uh, we'll bring him in. But just to give you a little bit of a um, just to give you a little bit of a background here, Cyrus Wheaton is the president of the Student Senate at Amherst College. Uh, which is a 33 member body um, that's elected on an annual basis. And we have been, uh, we met once in the spring and then we met recently to talk about ways that the student senate could collaborate with us. Uh, they they uh, reached out to me, I think, goodness, I want to say last April, and we started having some um, initial conversations about what that might look like. And then Cyrus and I met earlier this week. And so I'm gonna ask if Pamela could bring Cyrus into the room and we'll start there. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, thank you for joining us, Cyrus. Thanks for having me, I really appreciate it. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to share a few words really quickly. And yeah, like really great to meet all of you. Um, yeah, Cyrus, he, him pronouns. And I'm a senior at Amherst College. And I'm like Michelle said, I'm the president of the student. Like I'm a student body president here. Um, something that I've been thinking about a lot is how Amherst College needs to like work one well, work with the town, but also Amherst College's responsibility in um, like the uh, disenfranchisement, disproportionate access to like education and all of this like to like black people to Amherst Town's black people, and. Um, so I was thinking of ways that Amherst could kind of involve like themselves, Amherst College could involve themselves in Amherst Town's reparations work. And in talking with Michelle and like other of my colleagues and other senators, we've kind of come up with two ways we want to kind of approach this. The first is a more uh, labor, more like involvement, working, um, coming to the, um, the block party, trying to do as much as we can, uh, helping to just do a lot of the physical labor that like we can do, involve ourselves in any little projects that we can. And the second is a monetary um, uh, donation. I'm not like, sure exactly like what that exactly that number entails of, but kind of that two pronged approach and how we can uh, contribute. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. Um, a lot of the senators are really excited about this. And this is something that I've talked to like the Amherst College president about too. So it's very exciting. Thank you, Cyrus. Yeah, and just um, to build on that a little bit, I'm so happy that you had the opportunity to talk to the incoming, the new president um, about our work and glad that you have that ability to connect um, with him. And uh, in terms of the two-pronged approach, the sort of um, the assembly hasn't yet seen the rollout pieces of the campaign that that are going to be proposed. So that's going to happen at 2.30. It just so happened that Brianna couldn't meet until a little bit later. Um, but what we talked about, what, what I talked with Cyrus about was sort of in the two prongs, one being providing sort of boots on the ground help where we need it. So um, for example, when we have our registration portal up and running, which we do, and we're going to present that today, um, and we have our postcards printed, giving Cyrus and his colleagues the Black census that we conducted and asking them to go into the parts of the community um, where we've identified that Black people are living and distribute our postcards and distribute information about how they can register um, to the registration portal. Um, so if we're sort of kicking things off at the block party, Cyrus has agreed to come and join us and bring other senators um, to be there and help distribute those items that we hope to have printed in time for Thursday. And then to sort of follow that up um, accordingly with boots on the ground efforts, whether it's on the weekends or at times that are um, open for the senators to do that. And then the second prong is this monetary contribution. And Cyrus is doing some work behind the scenes to figure out what the amount of that contribution is. Um, and then at that point, we can invite Cyrus um, and any other senators that would like to join to come back and talk to the assembly about how that contribution might work, um, what the uses might be and things like that. Um, so we're really excited about the collaboration and just on a, um, a sort of a broader level, I think that Amherst College and the students are looking for ways to become more engaged in the Amherst community. And in the opposite direction, I think the Amherst community and I know the council and um, others that are on town committees are looking for ways to engage the Amherst College community. So this is one the work we're doing is specific to the uh, reparations work, but hopefully it will be a model for other um, uh, in, in engagement between the college and the town. So I wanna just open it up and see if anybody would like to ask Cyrus any questions um, or um, express anything otherwise to Cyrus before, um, before he leaves us. 
and just go ahead and I see uh, uh, Ms. Bridges, I see your hand. Yes, I would like to invite Cyrus and students to the exhibit that's next to the library. The exhibit that we have is um, the Ancestral Bridges and it has, it's a pictorial and indigenous um, of the black families and indigenous families that lived in Amherst back from the 1700s to through we have now. Um, and I, I would invite him to bring students along, faculty, whatever, and come and see this exhibit Saturdays from 11 to three. And also if they couldn't make Saturdays, I could arrange another day for them to come in, but it, it's very interesting for them to come and see. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to go. Uh, I last semester, I was the head of the, the Black Student Union as well. So like, I'd love to just have like, a lot of Black students coming to see kind of the history of the town that we live in as well as like, the senators. So yeah, I mean, I'll reach out for more information, especially just like, I know you said Saturdays 11 to 3, but I don't really right. know exactly where it is. And if it's, it's is right it... next to the Jones Library, to the left of the Jones Library. In the, okay. in the history museum, right? Yeah, right. And um, Ms. Bridges, I can connect you and Cyrus so that you can send okay. because I'm also thinking that it would be wonderful um, for folks to come see the Civil War tablets. And Absolutely, I was gonna say that after, but yeah, if we can, if we can do that, um, that would be great. All right, excellent. And I do see Pamela and I also see Bonds. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Shabazz also see yours. So let's go Pamela um, and then Yvonne and then Dr. Shabazz. I just wanted to um, point out that there are um, participants and um, at least uh, other participants have raised their hands. So you, and you did not do a public comment. So I don't know if you wanted to do that till after Cyrus's, but just wanted to point those couple of things out. Yeah, I think we'll hold public comment. Um, I didn't. So I think what I'm hearing you say, Pamela, is that somebody in the attendance office, attendance office, <laughs> the attendance room had their hand up. Is that what you you mean? Because I don't see on my end any hands up in the attendees. Do you, do you see some? Definitely there, and Pamela. Right. So oh. there. So now I'm I'm not. Oh, I'm not seeing any attendees um, now with their hands up, but there was, I think, um, a few minutes ago. And um, I just wanted you to be aware that there are attendees. So. so. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Thank you. And um, just to check in with you, I recognize two of the names, but Cyrus, is Rory Liddy a, a part of your? OK. All right, so just wanted to make sure. Um, okay, so we will be holding a public comment period um, just a little bit later in the meeting. So when I call on that, if folks want to speak, please raise your hand at that point. Um, so Yvonne and then Dr. Shabazz. Sure, just um, briefly, I just wanna thank you Cyrus for, um, for your initiative and coming forward. I think that um, all of the work that um, Amherst College students can help out with are, it's really valuable. I think those things that you mentioned, Michelle, you know, like really, you know, boots on the ground kind of stuff is really great, but also any, any information or comments or ideas that the group might have for reaching out more to different communities. You know, Amherst College has a, my sister went to school there. And I know that there was a lot of organizing um, back in the day with um, black students and um, the Charles Drew House and all these, you know, so I think that there's, um, I'd love to see Amherst College students um, relying on their own legacy to bring that forward in this process and, you know, understanding when our meetings are, maybe just coming as attendees to keep up with what's happening, but also, you know, really helping because that stuff is really, um, really valuable to us as a committee. Yeah, thank you for saying that. And like right now I'm in Charles Drew House. I live in Charles Drew. Um, and so I'll, you know, something that we do talk about, but I'll remind everyone that Amherst College is so much more than just, you know, the college of the black students on campus where like our history and everyone that's on, that lives in Amherst too. 
Um, so that's something I'll mention. Yeah, I think it's really important. I do think that Amherst College often is very um, separate from all of the schools and from the town. So I think this is a, a great effort. This is really great to, to, for it to be happening now and with us. <laughs> yes. My sister, my sister went there. So I was like, oh man, this is great. That's awesome. All right, Dr. Shabazz, thank you, Yvonne. Dr. Shabazz. Yes, uh, thanks as well. Um, I was just wondering, uh, Cyrus, if you were familiar there, uh, the status of um, any type of study looking at Amherst College's uh, involvement, connections to uh, uh, slavery in, in the United States? Yeah, I know there's a, a ongoing uh, conversation and a lot of research being done through like the school or like our archives and, and things like that. So I know it's more of like an in-depth study that's taking a lot longer. And something that like in conversations that I've had with administration asking them to like, you know, I like at least match our donation or like, you know, try to donate themselves. Their biggest conversation is they want to complete, you know, the research and try to see like what Amherst College's role in like, I guess, you know, slavery and all these things before they, they um, decide like the, the best way to approach it. Um, so I think, I guess they're just like a little, they're like further behind like Harvard's like research. And um, yeah, I think, I think, I don't think they'll, they'll be done before I graduate and I'm a senior. Yeah, Harvard appropriated a sum of money. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to track how far they've gotten. I haven't seen any research reports come out as yet. So uh, Brown University, I think, is probably, and Georgetown are two of the ones that are probably uh, maybe a little further along. Um, Georgetown has gone so far as to offer scholarships to descendants of, uh, of families who were enslaved uh, and, and uh, that, that Georgetown University profited off of. And there's some other places that have, that have researched it to that, to that magnitude. But, uh, but yeah, um, let's please, let's stay in touch. And thanks for the offer to, uh, to assist uh, us in our work. Yeah, of course. And when I kind of learn more about the schools, um, the results of the research, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you for sure. And one um, further suggestion, maybe Cyrus, to add to that, and I, I don't know if I had a chance to mention this to you, but uh, so the first municipality, Evanston, Illinois, to take on reparations, um, the woman who led that effort, um, former Alderwoman Robin Rue Simmons, um, has now is running an organization called First Repair. Um, and first repair is going into local communities and helping them to create reparative justice plans. Um, first repair is very much working in partnership with lifelong trustee at Amherst College, Chuck Lewis. It just so happens to be that it was a, sort of a serendipitous um, that we would be the second community. And, and then, you know, so um, that may be somebody that if you have the opportunity to talk to, Chuck is a great uh, resource. And I think at some point we may all want to have to be able to, because these are conversations that no, no, we all understand you can't just jump you know, into things without really talking and recognizing the impact that all of these things have on the community and on the college. And so I just really appreciate you playing the role of sort of um, liaison for that. Um, and so however we can support you in that, please let us know. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, so um, I just want to check with Hala or Dr. Rhodes to see if you have any comments or questions for Cyrus or Pamela before we um, let him get back to his <laughs> life. <laughs> None here. None there. Okay, thank you. How about you, Hala? Any questions right now? Their comments? Okay, um, she may have had to step away. 
So wonderful. So Cyrus, I will follow up with you. Um, be, you're welcome to. Oh, her sound is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Hala, we can't hear you. You're a little bit broken up right now. Do you want to try try again? Okay. Well, if there's a if there's anything that um, Hala would like for me to communicate to you, Cyrus, I will find out and let you know. Um, no. Still no good. Yeah. yeah. Did you get that, Cyrus? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, no worries. I'll check in with Hala and, and we'll relay that. Um so I will be in touch with you, Cyrus. You're welcome to stay and watch the rest of the meeting um, if you would like to see uh, what we're doing with the website and all of that kind of stuff. Otherwise, I will follow up with you um, about Thursday's block party and getting out into the community um, in the next day or so. So thank you. And Pamela will move you back into the attendees and then you can decide from there. Thank you so much for coming. And Dr. Shabazz, your hand is still raised, so just checking in with you. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. So let me just do a quick check here. All right. So Brianna is going to be joining us in about five minutes. And so what I'm going to do is um, share with you just a little bit about what's been happening since we last met. So when we last met, uh, we discussed uh, that Dr. Shabazz and I would meet with Brianna, who is um, just been such a, a wonderful help to us. And I'll be sure to thank her when she's here, but she is responsible for the Engage Amherst webpage, uh, which is the page that sort of allows um, for projects to be to be put um, in, have a project page, and it has all sorts of excellent tools that can be used to engage with residents. And so we've been thinking about a campaign. We met with Brianna and had a great meeting and talked about what we were hoping to achieve um, with the website, which includes uh, various different components that Brianna will walk us through for uh, to propose to you and for finalization. Um, and just thanks to Dr. Shabazz for uh, joining me in that meeting. I think it was a really, really good meeting and we have a good product to show you. Um, so in addition to that, part of our campaign is to get out into the community and, and, and get into all of the pockets and try to reach as many residents of African heritage as we can. Um, and so I have been working uh, with my ex-mother-in-law, actually. Uh, my ex-husband's mother is an, a, a wonderful artist. And she has helped to create some artwork for us that uh, we have used now on the Engage page, as well as to create some postcards and a flyer and other things. So welcome, Brianna. Hi, everybody. Hi there. Thank you for, for joining us. And I was just saying um, how helpful you've been in this process and how excited I am to share what we've been up to. Um, so before quickly before actually, you know what, let's, let's go straight to the, to the page. Um, I was going to just briefly share the postcard, but we can come back to that. Let's start with the sort of broader, um, pieces. So I'm going to, do you need access to share screen Brianna or do you already have it? I think I have it. Okay. Perfect. So I can, I can do that from my screen. Just a moment while I pull it up. Um, is it worth giving the group um, kind of a higher level view of Engage Amherst for a moment or two first before we look at the page? 
Yeah, I think just a quick overview of what it, you know, I I said basically what I thought it did, but yeah, please. <laughs> okay, this, will, this will be quick, just to, to orient people onto the same page. Just a minute while I get my screen shared. So screen three. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. I'm seeing head shaking. <laughs> okay, good. So just briefly, engageamherst.org is a new public participation platform um, that's online. And we try to put our major uh, current initiatives on there in order to seek public consultation, um, in addition to showing up to a meeting or making a public comment in the traditional sense. Um, so it's a really great way to connect with community members um, in a different way outside of public meetings with uh, questions, prompts, information. So it's really designed to any initiative that has a component where you're going to be uh, asking things of the public or seeking feedback from the public. Uh, so a, a couple of quick um, examples, we've been using it for our Hickory Ridge um, acquisition to see what people want to do with the space. Uh, we've been using it for the residential rental bylaw review um, that the CRC or the, I think it's the CRC um, committee of the council is working on to get feedback around uh, rental bylaw changes. So there's a number of different tools that this site offers. Um, it could be purely informational, it could be surveys, there's mapping tools, all kinds of different tools to engage uh, people in, in different ways. If they wanna make a quick comment, it's a, a ladder of participation. You don't have to show up to all the meetings, but maybe you wanna answer the quick survey. So. Uh, it was designed to broaden our uh, access to, for, for the public on important topics. So you'll see here a number of things that are ongoing at the moment, um, other initiatives, and you can view our archive if anyone's interested in looking at this. Uh, so what I'm about to show you is a draft page um, for the assembly's work, and it will, if it is something that we end up using this tool for, which it sounds like we are, it'll have a nice little real estate and a tile on here. Uh, when people come to engage Amherst, they'll see that as an activity that they can part uh, participate in. So um, I am going to flip over quickly to the draft page, which is not live yet, uh, but we wanted to show you what we've come up with so far. Um, I believe Councillor Miller mentioned before I got on the call about the logos and the things from. Um, yeah, okay. if, you, if I could just quickly, because I didn't, I didn't fully explain that. If I could just quickly okay. begin with that. I'll pause. Say, okay, awesome. So um, the uh, logo here is something that my mother-in-law helped to design. Um, if I would, I would love feedback on that. It's also showing up on the postcard and the flyer. Um, and then I also just wanted to point as Brianna goes through, um, you'll see that we have the um, portal that Dr. Shabazz talked about, the registration portal that Dr. Shabazz talked about is one of the first things that we're asking folks to do. Um, and that has a link off to another, uh, to something that I need to go through with you all, but we'll do that once Brianna leave so we don't hold her up um, because I, I want to make sure that I have all of the right questions in that registration form for folks. All right, back to you. <laughs> so um, each project that we do can have, you know, a custom banner here. It could be a, a picture. It could be something like this. Um, the way that we've structured the projects is typically, um, we obviously name the project. Um, again, this is a preview. It's not live until we get the go ahead to make it live. Um, each project has a custom URL so that if you want to put it on a flyer or, you know, let people know that they can go to this web address to find it. Uh, typically, we inform the public about who is listening. Um, since that's the assembly, we have that uh, front and center. And then uh, we always have staff members um, listed and available as a point of contact. So that's how we have that set up uh, right here. The about section is gonna give a little bit of information about 
the process and what you're uh, working on and really clearly identify what the calls to action are. So this isn't a draft status. There's a couple things that um, we were planning to change um, that that we, we will, we just haven't got a chance to yet. Uh, but it seemed important to have this front and center about um, regis the registration portal. We are trying to push people to the uh, town's page for the assembly uh, to look at the full membership, to access minutes. Uh, we also call out the resources page. And one thing um, that we will probably re relocate on this page is highlighting the Black Census data, um, giving links. We've made it interactive so people can actually see it on the website as well. Um, over on the right hand side, you'll see um, a life cycle of your process that you're going through, um, especially the public likes to see where they're fitting into the timeline of your work. Um, so we've identified some previous steps that have taken place. So those are checked off and to show them that we're in this current consultation phase. And ultimately what the end goal is, is to give that final report to town council. Brianna, um, can you just pause? I just got um, a notice that maybe some folks were having a hard time hearing you. Um, I'm hearing you okay, but if could you say, if just unmute yourself if you're having a hard time hearing Brianna. Okay, Ms. Bridges, are you having difficulty hearing Brianna? It's, it's, she's going in and out like, like two, three words, and then I miss a word, and then she comes back. But it's starting to get a little better now. But it was, she was going in and out. But as it goes on, I think it's like one word I'll miss. But it's getting a little bit better, but it's like an echoey. But okay. I'm listening. <laughs> um, if no one else is experiencing that, it might be kind of, connectivity issue um yeah but i can proceed if if everybody yeah, else is please go okay. ahead and we'll check please do in. yeah okay um okay so we have the the life cycle here which again the public really enjoys seeing where they're fitting into this process and what's happening with the end result or what's going to happen with the feedback that they provide um so really engage amherst the whole point is to have actions or um, tools that we use for the public to come and do something or complete an action. So we have the registration link. Uh, right now we have an example of one of the tools, um, but there's any number of them. So right now we have a news um, feature where we've um, highlighted the Valley Advocate uh, coverage. If there's more news that comes um, out as part of your process, that's a spot where we can um, post those almost like a, a blog. Um, however, if there was a survey, if there was um, an idea generator, and maybe to give that some context, I'll show you a couple of the other projects, but there's any number of tools that we can have here, and we can let people know, please fill out the survey, please uh, submit your idea. Um, you know, one thing that we were really successful with was the Hickory Ridge project, we had an idea generator, we open-ended asked community what they'd like to see with the space. Um, and so the page um, filled up with 150 unique ideas. People could comment on the ideas, vote the ideas. We made a word cloud of the ideas that were submitted. So it's just another um, way to have the community interact with the work. Um, Brianna, so I'm sorry, I have to <laughs> stop you one more time. Yep. Um, Pamela, Hala is in the attendees. If you could bring, no, did she? She's coming back. Oh, yeah, I'm in here now. Oh, great. Okay, welcome back. Okay, go ahead, Brianna, sorry. <laughs> Um, no, that's okay. So I, I thought um, maybe to give some context, we could look at one or two of the other tools live just to you know, have an idea of what I mean when I say uh, survey tools or idea tools. Um, this one's pretty self-explanatory because it's basically like a blog, a news update. So if we get another story or you're covered in another uh, program or there's a development, we can add new items to this. And it's another spot for those to people who are interested in the process to check back and, and stay informed. Um, so I'm going to flip over to another project, but if there's any questions, um, I just ask the chair to feel free to funnel those to me as I navigate over to another project to show an example. Absolutely. And just to be really clear, any of this can be changed. So for example, the 
photo that we're showing doesn't include all of the assembly members. And so one of the things that we talked about is can we get everybody together um, now that we're all seem to be back in Amherst and have a nice photo um, taken of all of us. So that would go front and center here. Um, but without a photo, it was sort of lacking like a human touch. So we added that one for now. Um, additionally, we talked about whether or not this black census should be a standalone as it is here, or should we include it into the newsfeed? And that's something that um, we were playing with and that you may want to think about. What that would do if we move it into the news feed, it, it would move the how to get involved piece up. Um, and we're sort of working with two, we're, we're asking residents of African heritage to register. That's our first call to action. But we're also thinking about how we want to more broadly engage the community if we're at that moment right now and what sort of tool do we want to use to do that. Um, and so those are just sort of some caveats. The other piece is um, that we'll be changing if everyone's okay with it. I changed on the postcard, the language. Could you scroll up, Brianna, just so I can. Um, so where it says, uh, do you identify as African heritage black and live in Amherst? Um, we, I changed it to say, Register yourself with the African Heritage Reparation Assembly to be to learn more about a historical reparative justice initiative underway because it's possible that folks don't want to be part of it, but they want to learn more. And so to make it more inclusive, that was a recommendation. Um, so I see Dr. Shabazz's hand is up. We're gonna go to him and then um, we'll pause before Brianna switches over. Please, Dr. Shabazz. I wanted to uh, ask uh, for a quick uh, round if people will all be at the block party on Friday. I can arrange to have a photographer, like if we could designate maybe right at the top at five o'clock um, or 530. And if everyone's there, that might be an opportunity to uh, get a photo that will be inclusive of Hala, Yvonne uh, and myself with, the, with everyone else. Yeah, that and it's on Thursday, just to clarify, um, Dr. Shabazz, it, the Black Party. Say, yeah. Did I oh, not say Thursday? You said Friday, but. <laughs> Thursday at 5 p.m. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think Dr. Shabazz is asking um, for folks to say if they will plan to be there. Uh, I think that's an excellent idea if everybody is going to be there. Um, and maybe if not, we can even do it I don't know, on Wednesday, for example, if we really want to get the picture changed in time. Um, so let's come back to that question and see what folks are thinking. Um, Dr. Rhodes. I, um, the only comment I have was about the postcard and the wording. I think that's an excellent change. Uh, I think that um, we, uh, when, when we use the word register, I'm not sure about that word and using it. It's like uh, other people can weigh in on it, but for, for whatever reason, it's register is, um, is, is problematic to me. And it might not be to other people, but if other people don't feel the same way, I'm comfortable going here with it. But uh, it doesn't sort of like registering for the draft or, you know, anyway, it, 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 another word would be, better from my perspective, but the rest of it is, is really good. Yeah, I, I think that's really good feedback. And I am curious if the word register has activates anything for other folks as well. Um, and, and that's very easy for us to change in both this uh, and the postcard. So let's sit with that for a moment um, while Brianna kind of fi finishes her presentation and then we can come back to that. Okay, Brianna. Okay, so um, like Councillor Miller said earlier, any of these details are changeable. I mean, we can adjust content, we can um, 
activate different pieces of information. We can embed videos here if there's a good explainer video for, for the work. Um, so there's a lot of possibility. Uh, but something I wanted to just show quickly were a couple of the tools and how they could be used for the assemblies work should you um, choose to do that. And one of them that I think was really successful in terms of getting the community interested in, in contributing to the work um, was an idea generator tool. Um, and so you'll hopefully can all still see my screen. Um, this particular uh, consultation is closed. So that'll indicate that, you know, it's not something active that you, you need to be contributing to. So ultimately, when your project winds down, we would have that same language. It would always live there forever, but we'd archive it. Um, but just for an example, so that you can see what one of the tools looks like in action, uh, we asked people to share their ideas about what they would do with Hickory Ridge. Again, keep in mind your own project and your own content. Uh, 156 people submitted ideas. They're all searchable if you wanted to search for uh, a specific word. Um, people can like the ideas. They can comment on other people's ideas. Um, that's a great idea, or I would rather do this. So it's another way to get a lot of voices um, involved in a really low stake, easy um, way. So at the end of the day, um, all of the ideas would be here, but on the back end, it would give you the opportunity to kind of package all of this the consultation surveys, whatever tools you use into a cohesive report, uh, a PDF, if you wanted to show that to your decision makers or include that in the report to the council in your case. Um, you can get a sense of sentiment by reading people's ideas and what they've sub submitted. You can generate word clouds. You can discover themes that are coming if people are re repeating. Um, you know, one thing that came up for us was trails, bicycle trails. Those, those things kept coming up with this particular consultation. Um, so there are a number of tools, depending on what you're looking to do with the public, that I would suggest based off of what you're going to be asking or um, how you want to interact with the public on this process. Um, so surveys, um, idea generator, there's even a, a mapping tool, there's a Q&A tool where you can allow community members to ask questions and a dedicated person will respond to those particular questions. Um, so if you ever if you ever have a chance to look, take a look at the site offline, I can show more and answer more questions. But um, if you ever wanted to see some of the things that this site can do, you could take a look at some of the other projects that are um, listed here. For example, we've run the, the town manager's review, um, which is also coming up soon. We, last year, we ran that through Engage Amherst. So it's just, we're trying to socialize the idea that this is a place where you can go to see what uh, projects are going on and how you can contribute your your feedback and your thoughts to it, in addition to all the other tried and true methods. Uh, Thank you, Brianna. And I noticed, and I wanted to ask you about this so you could answer it um, for the assembly. I noticed that in the idea generator you just shared, there was one that said removed by the moderator. Um, it was just a box and it said removed by the moderator. And so could you talk to us a little bit about the way that this is um, sort of security wise structured, um, given especially the nature of what we're the kind of work we're doing? Yes. So in that example, someone had submitted an idea and in their idea, they used a word that was considered inappropriate. I don't remember what it was in that one. I think it was, you know whatever it was describing like don't ruin the nature and just in a very kind of sassy way and so it is moderated uh there are keywords that are searched but it's also moderated by the company so there's um, people actually looking at the comments not censoring them but just making sure that there's not any um sensitive language any hate speech or anything like that coming through um the comments that is um, across the board. However, on each project or um, tool, you can make it as, as open or as closed. You can require people to register um, with their full information or provide a name and email address. Uh, we typically tend to require at least uh, an email address so that this that the person can uh, receive the updates if they get 
someone votes on their their comment. Um, so we can make it as fine tuned as we would like in terms of would have to provide if they want it to comment. We tend to again have that be not a barrier and make it a little bit more open. But well, you can make that decision on whether what level people have to register in order to interact with the materials. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, Brianna, I was hoping that the assembly could answer some of these questions that we have, but we, I think it will be helpful to be able to see the site as we're doing that. I don't want to keep you longer than um, you anticipated being here. So I'm just wondering what your timeline is, if you can be here as we work through some of these questions so that we can look at the site while we're talking about it. Um, or if you have to jump, uh, we'll figure out another solution for that. Um, I might be able to provide you with a preview link. Okay. So we could see if that works. So just give me one second to see if I can do that. And I think the best would be um, if there are changes to kind of um, work off of that and maybe say, let's change this paragraph to this. Um, so if you give me one moment, let me see if I can get you a preview link. Great. And while you're doing that, I see Dr. Shabazz's hand is raised. Yes, if the preview link is available, that can be helpful. And then uh, in whatever manner that Councillor Miller would, uh, or the chair would like, we can perhaps uh, give feedback. One of the questions, specific questions, uh, Councillor Miller raised had to do with the uh, information in terms of the study of the 2020 census, I would agree, let's make that a separate link or a, a news feed item. And, uh, and therefore, the how to get involved could could scroll up. The information will be there, it just will be captured in a in a separate uh, place that you would scroll to. So that would be uh, agreeable to that. There are also things not to duplicate everything that's on our regular engage Amherst page. I know this is more of a specific campaign trying to emphasize consultation. Um, so um, things like the link that we have there that takes us to all of our previous meetings as archived uh, on, on uh, social media, um, those would be things that are already on the main page, but perhaps if there's some way to, to highlight or to note what's some of the things that are available on the main page. But other than that, I will really try to think more specific to this specific consultative campaign, things that we might um, look to include, particularly um, I'm thinking of the, the seven, uh, the harm areas that are part of the, the nationally recognized discourse in terms of housing, home ownership, health care, education, uh, crime and punishment, um, uh, peoplehood, nationhood. Uh, and, uh, you know, so if we could kind of um, maybe th that might be an area to specifically guide or to prompt the ideas generation, uh, the generation of ideas uh, is to to have people have some understanding of that, which I can try to work on and, and, and suggest something. That's a really great idea to use that as a prompt from my perspective, um, to get people generating ideas, but giving some sort of framework, especially for folks who might not even know, you know, what's what what the discourse is, what any, you know, this might be brand new. I'm thinking, I was thinking over the, the weekend just about how somebody may come to this page that knows nothing and somebody may come to this page that knows a whole lot. And so how can we reach that whole spectrum? Um, and I did just receive your email, uh, Brianna. So that will allow me to open up and we can preview and that way um, what I'll do is including what Dr. Shabazz just said, and then any of the other comments that come, I'll create a list to send to you of all of the feedback. Um, and then of course we can um, touch, touch in, check, check in um, throughout the week. Yeah, I think that would be great. And if, if the assembly can think of um, just as Dr. Shabazz just suggested, if there's other things that come to mind that, that, I can go over and show you more tools. If I know what kinds of questions that you're looking to ask, I can suggest, oh, well, let's try this tool, or maybe this tool will be a good one to. to 
um, the link that you have sh will expire in seven days. And I would just ask, it's, you're welcome to share it within the assembly, but once you share it outside of that, anyone can see that content. And if you're not ready for it to be prime time, I would just say that to keep the, the preview in the, in the group for now. Awesome. Definitely. We will definitely do that. I don't know that there's a way when I, oh, it's, it, it, it comes up just like it would if it was live. So exactly. there's nothing to, okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Brianna. Really been great to work with you on this. I have a quick question bond. for Brianna. Yeah. Um, yeah, please. So go the ahead. back end of the site, like all of the comments that people make, if we decide to have people make comments and then moderating it would be in your office? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so a lot of the uh, moderation happens through the actual uh, platform itself. And then we can decide as a group, um, or you can decide as a group whether you wanted to further secure things by requiring people to register before they interact with some of your prompts so we can there are a lot of options there um, and then the other the other good thing which i didn't show you today is really the reports and the analysis the analytics coming out of it that you can include as part of your final report are really compelling um, so more to come on that all right great any other questions for brianna before she goes and then what we'll do is we're going to pull up that preview and we're going to go through item by item and really get into it and see what we want to keep what we want to change um and and so uh, dr shabazz your hand is still up is that a holdover okay <laughs> all right thank you brianna really appreciate it we'll talk to you soon sounds good thank you for having me have a nice right. day Okay, so I'm going to, uh, let me just do, share my screen here. Um, Did she send you the preview link? Yes, and Did I can- you email it to us? Absolutely, yeah, I'll forward we it could to you. Follow, follow along. Yeah, let me do that right now. I just have to pop it into my other email because I don't have everybody saved. Um, hang on one second. Um, let's, and I'll pull it up on the screen for us as well. Um, <clears throat> While you're doing that, I just will mention breaking news at, at Harvard. Um, you know, the case of Belinda uh, X, who um, the Harvard donor money went to, um, uh, was part of, was one of the human beings enslaved by, by the royals. Um, it has been recommended by the dean of the law school that the Harvard shield, the logo, um, it, with its ties to the royal family and to slavery, uh, be eliminated as the logo of Harvard University. And it strikes me that the Harvard shield is a prototype uh, influence, the, the symbolism of Amherst, town of Amherst. It's almost an example. Um, it, it sort of draws right from the Harvard. So it's something we might want to look at in terms of the history of the Amherst logo. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I'm going to have to sign off momentarily because where I am right now is becoming incredibly untenable in terms of noise level. And I'll find another place and come back on. Okay. <laughs> we'll be looking for you, Dr. Rhodes. Bye. Oh, wow. Well, if there's an article that you can send to us, Dr. Shabazz, please do that, but I'm sure we can get it pretty quickly. Um, but thank you for sharing that. And I did just email everybody the link. I'm also going to go ahead and share my page now. Um, so please let me know if you haven't. Okay, that's the registration. Where is, here we go. Does everyone see the the link, like the page that we looked at on, like, can you see my screen right now? Okay, great. Um, and I just wanna show you briefly, and we're gonna come back to this, but this is the flyer 
that will uh, get printed or, and, and includes a QR code. Um, the QR code takes us to the registration portal. Um, and then of course the website's on there. And here we did change the language to, to learn more instead of to be a part of. Um, and that was uh, some feedback. Um, and so these can be printed. I, I have it as a, an eight by 10 flyer and then two sizes of postcards on a little bit of a harder stock that we can print to get out into, into the community. So I'm gonna take, I see Vaughn's hand is raised first and then we'll go from there. Um, this is a general comment and I'd love for um, Shabazz to give me a little bit of background. So I am enjoying the logo, I think it's great. Um, I like the muted colors, but I also know there's some significance in some colors that are direct to Pan-Africanism and African history. And so I'm wondering if there's a way to integrate a few of those colors into this color scheme so that there's some recognition by the African-American community. And those colors are gold, black, red, and green. Um, they're primary colors. And if they're, I mean, I'm not saying to, for them to overrun the design because I like what you have here because it's the colors are more modern mm -hmm. and universal. And I like that. I like the greens and the browns in this. I like the orange colors because I think that that gets a little bit more at earth. But mm -hmm. the red, black, green, and gold were, have specific significance. And Shabazz can chime in about, you know, green being the land and red being the blood of the people. and. So it would be nice in the small bands if we could replicate those those colors just in the small bands and keep the other colors the same. Absolutely. Yes? Okay. You know, Yvonne, I had a, a similar feeling about the color palette and uh, and some of the words you just said. I, I did feel some of the earth tones here. I saw some of the foil fall, fall foliage. Uh, with our leaves yes. here, yes. I saw, you know, I saw, I, I like the vibe here, but then there is also the Pan-African uh, palette of, of red, black, green, and gold. You're right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm saying subtle, you know, a subtle addition, the smaller, a few of the smaller lines could be the, those primary colors and leave the rest of it the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, in, in, and that goes for the large banner with the AHRA and then the smaller will, okay, great. I think it's beautiful. It'll be, it seems so wonderfully universal, you know, like I, I like it, but I think that those colors, like I said, when I looked at it, I was like, where, where are our colors? <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be nice to have them in there, even as a hint of it. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, maybe uh, Alexis, I see your hand is up. Hi. Um, I'm sorry that I'm coming in um, so late. Um, I is this is this logo something that we um, we commissioned someone to make? No. So I explained a little bit in the in the uh, beginning about this, Alexis. I actually asked. My, this is my ex mother in law, who is a graphic designer and a beautiful artist and. Um, I asked her to come up with a design based on, you know, I showed her all of our stuff. And so this is what she came up with. Um, but it's totally um, up for any sorts of feedback whatsoever and can be modified in any ways. Um, we're not paying her. She's just totally in kind. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just, I didn't want to say anything. I feel like it was something that we already bought. So um, I, I agree. And I think that it's, it might be worth it just to like, like, what if each of the letters was one of those colors, um, then it might kind of just eliminate the need for the background at all. Because I think that if we start, it, it is an intentional color palette. These, these colors right now that we see here are in conversation with each other. If we add in colors, multiple colors outside of this color palette, there will no longer be a conversation or at least it won't be in the same language. And so I think it's fine if we just sort of take the step to just go in that direction, because I think that when folks see that color palette, that that right there speaks to them 
that this is of African heritage. So I, I, I agree. And I guess I'm saying like, I would be okay with just, with not being subtle with that. And especially cause like, I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't see any disadvantage to being loud about it. So I just wanted to share that two cents. Sure. Absolutely. So just so I can make sure I'm hearing you, Alexis, are you saying to get rid of the color scheme in the background completely and just have the letters and what would the, in, in your perspective, the background color be? So if we're, if we're going to, so either, so either, or I guess is what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't think that these two palettes, like if we're considering the Pan-African flag colors to be one palette and for this autumnal, um, palette to be another um I don't see them meshing well and so I'm saying like either one or the other whether that's the background being those colors or if we just forego a background and just have the AHRA because I'm also thinking you know this is going to have to exist if, if we're going to stick with this, this is going to have to exist and live in other forms um, and so like, is this a, a logo that we can put at the top of like a, a, a letterhead or, you know, so I, I think that we have more options and more flexibility if we don't tie ourselves down to this background. Yeah. And I think we will have to use it in other, that's actually how I had explained it to her is like, think of it as like almost a letterhead type thing, because we weren't going to be getting into any, you know, fancy art necessarily. <laughs> you know, I, I want to preface, or I guess it's too late to preface, but like, I like this, but I I'm hearing oh. and agreeing with what, um, Yvonne and Dr. Shabazz is saying. So, um, that was that, this is like my suggestion to like, a an easy solving of it. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> yes, Yvonne, go ahead. I, I agree. And I don't, I think, I think those colors will fit fine with this background. I actually, I like the logo the, the way it is, except adding that color. I, I don't think they'll conflict. And I'm wondering if your designer can add the elements so we can take a look at it. I don't know what kind of time frame that you're on, but I do agree with Alexis. Maybe there is just the letter, you, I would say use this same design and change the color of the white letters as an option to the, to the primary colors I said before, or leave it as is with a couple of bands of those colors. I don't, I don't think it'll conflict. I think it might, it might make it pop a little more and make it more interesting, a little sure. bit more interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say go back to the designer and see if, if they're willing to do that and we could take a look at it. You could probably pass it around and have people just take a look at it. Yeah, I think what I could do, so she'll definitely be able to probably even tonight get to this. And so what I would ask her to do is one version where the letters are um, using the colors that you suggested, and then um, one where we add bands using those colors so we can look at both options. Um, it may be easy enough for her to even add no background, but what I'm hearing is I think the consensus is generally that we like the background, but we want to try to add these colors. So, um, and then what I think I can do is send it to Jennifer and Pamela and they, and, and we basically, I can send it, but you can only reply to me. We can't reply all on an email, um, obviously. So uh, we can definitely do that. That's really great feedback. And um, I do see Alexis that your hand is still raised. So I coming back to you. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So since, um, Irv is not back yet and he is the one who, um, brought up some concern about the word register, I'm going to hold off on that particular piece of things. But what I would like to do is go through the site um, and also take you to the registration. I want you to see what the registration looks like. And I think feedback on that is uh, really necessary right now. So let me see if this is actually gonna let me, okay. So let's just go here and start with the registration. Um, and this is something that I am going to send to everybody uh, to be able to, view and offer suggestions. Um, so first and foremost here we have under the, so we, again, we have the banner and then we have under the heading, 
We say to protect your privacy, your registration will be assigned a unique identifier by the AHRA. This was Dr. Shabazz who pointed me to Evanston's work and what they did, which is to create a unique number identifier identifier for each person that registered. And there are programs that will allow us to do that. I'll have to speak with the town staff just to see exactly how that might work. Um, we have first name, last name. Uh, we have, are you over 18 years old? Um, the thought here is I'm not sure about whether benefits will be you know, under 18, you'll be eligible for benefits, but we may want to capture youth and their um, and have them involved in the process. So, um, but being able to delineate that, uh, whether you currently live in Amherst, what your address is, ask whether you identify as Black or African heritage, and then um, finally, would you uh, two more questions? Would you like to be included in future outreach? And then is there anything else you would like for us to know? So again, this is something that um, is completely easy to adjust uh, and, and very curious. The way I have it set up right now is that um, there will be a default message that comes to folks after they fill it out that, let me just see here. So they'll get a copy of what they wrote. And then where is the, there's a confirmation confirmation message um, that we can include here. So right now, just as your response has been reported, but we can, if there's something else, like for example, if we wanna link people to the website, so maybe they've only used the QR code to get here. And then once they fill it out, in the confirmation message, they'll get an email that will that will send be sent to them with our website. Um, so questions and comments about this, and please just go ahead and raise your hand. Dr. Shabazz, could I turn it over to you? This was really your vision, and um, we talked somewhat about it, but I executed um, based on what we discussed as much as possible, but would love your, to, to hear if this is what you have. I would just say, folks, um, if we can have, um, if we can't have approval now, let's have a little feedback time, and then if we can authorize us to go forward to uh, finalize this uh, again, possibly before before Thursday, I think this is in line with uh, uh, helping us to build a a the kind of listing of uh, members of the community, the African heritage community that want to be um, in this uh, you know in this consultative process, want to be kept informed, want to have uh, uh, a linkage to our work here to be able to contribute, um, you know, in the way of generating ideas and the way of uh, responding to how we're operating. So I think this is, uh, this is just in line with what we, what we called for. And uh, again, if, if uh, people are in general agreement with it, uh, we can, you know, I, I think we will be prepared to, to start distributing links to, do, are we gonna do a bit.ly ultimately for, that that address or is it going to be a long address or uh that's a great question dr shabazz the only place it shows up right now is as a qr code uh -huh. um, and then on the website itself it just has words and it's linked to it yeah. um so we could consider doing that and i'm thinking if we're gonna want to go to print so that we can have our friends at amherst college and others distributing um at the block party then i think if for example everybody can provide feedback by like noon tomorrow i can still get everything rushed to print in time for that um and 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 the website can be a work in progress. So we don't have to have everything perfect for that. But since we have this opportunity, I would have a I would have a banner printed for us for our table at the block party. Um, and then these, these uh, postcards to go out. And this will be after we've 
looked again at the coloring of the logo and everything. So maybe if we can turn that around quickly by like tomorrow at noon or so, we should be good. And Alexis, I see your hand is raised. Um, so when you hit send and then you, like if you were to hit send right now, mm -hmm. um, and then if you go to the, sorry, sorry, are you, are you able to click on the send button? The, oh, the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking some reason it was at the bottom, but it's, yeah, it's right there. Okay, let's see what happens. And, then, yeah. and next to the mail envelope, there's like a link, like in between, yeah, right there. And then where it says shorten URL, that's how you can shorten it. Oh, brilliant. Okay, thank you. I, I just, just as like a quick, just because I could do it quickly. Um, wait, let me make sure that you can see. Um, okay, so so we have like the regular HRA, then we have it if the colors are primary oh. colors over it. Mm -hmm. And then this is it if the colors are integrated into here. Um, so we can I, just change I, the white to red, gold, black. Uh, <laughs> I can't see it. I can't. Alexis, see it. can I, you share your I screen? I'm gonna unshare. Will you share? Yeah, I saw it. If we could just make the A H R A red, black, gold, and green, we're we're there. I I did so a version I, as well I'll, uh, that I emailed to you, Michelle. Okay, so here, you let can me show it on your screen. It, sure. I mean, it works. Yeah. Y'all are so badass, man. <laughs> Well, hers, well, Alexis, yours is animated or something, right? <laughs> mine is just, I just added bands of color to mine. So I just emailed it to you. So you could. Yeah, I'm going to share that right now. Um, and then we'll go to yours, Alexis. Okay, oh, is it, this is, this is right, right? Okay, perfect. So this adds the bands. Um, this is one option. Oh my God. I, I am blown away that the two of you just like, did this on the spot like this. It's so great. <laughs> um alexis so this is one yeah, i want to see what alexis did yeah okay uh, so i'm gonna take this down and then i think she changed the lettering from the white lettering on top to to the colors to, to red black gold and green sorry i need i'm gonna rejoin from my computer i'll be right back oh okay. <laughs> sounds good <laughs> Let me uh, say as well one thing uh, on sure. the the form itself, Michelle. Yeah, if we're guiding people in already uh, on the question of do you identify as black or African American. So rather than do you identify yes no, maybe that's one that we could tweak to say something like you know uh, um, as an African American, how do you identify? And then could give instead. Um, opportunities to say, you know, um, uh, historically uh, uh, African-American, intergenerational African, I'm just off the top of my head right now, but also, you know, um, ethnicities from, from the Caribbean and yeah. different African ethnicities from, from the continent. That might be something we could tweak there to get a, to, to fine, fine tune the information, but at the same time, um, uh, already acknowledging that they're 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 in the site because they have have expressed that they're of African heritage. Yeah, absolutely. I I think that that's a really good idea. I wonder if we. I wouldn't want. To, I would at least want to get that list of, from you and make sure that we work together right. to make sure I got that right. Um, or. Yeah, so let's let's I think that's an easy fix. Yeah. I'll get with you. Um, I'll get with you okay. <laughs> and I see Ms. Bridges hands up. So I want to go to you, Ms. Bridges, and then we'll um play around with this here. Please, Ms. Bridges. You're muted right now, Ms. Bridges. I was thinking about what Shabazz was saying, but I would think that would be a lot of information to put, but then again, maybe not. Um, I was also having the question after the the first name. It said short version or something after the first name. Oh, you know what that is? That's a short no. answer. 
No, I know it. I know what you mean. It's it's um like you have an option to do short answer, long answer, or paragraph, or something like that. So for your first name, right? So it, it's the only option there is to choose short answer. They won't see that though. Right. Right. That's like okay. a back end thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that, okay. that part's right. invisible to them. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, you better have a short. No, it's, it's what like, is that? yeah, no, that's what, you know what, after we do this, let's go back to the form and, and we'll, yeah, clarify that. Wait, can Shabazz, I was trying to understand what you just, um, what you just said. You mean like to add a, a couple of questions or to fill in this question about black or African heritage? Right. So instead of saying yes or no, to say, you know, how do you identify as a person of African heritage? Uh, choice one could be from the Caribbean. Choice two could be from the African continent. Choice three could be, you know, intergenerationally from the United States of America. I don't, that's not the exact language, but it could offer there for, you know, three or four different choices of how they identify as part of being a person of African heritage, resident of Amherst, okay? Mm -hmm. So for example, Sid, my, my friend Sid Ferrer, he might check it off. Yes, I'm, I'm of African heritage. And he might say, I'm, you know, he's from the continent of Africa. Um, you know, someone uh, might say, you know, I, um, from the Caribbean, but we, it would give us another layer of information, but already acknowledging that they uh, have, that, that they identify as being of African heritage. Can we, can we come back to it? Because it can also have the opposite effect where people are absolutely. like oh i'm like i i have to check a box you know like yes yeah. absolutely yeah so i'm i think if we do it i'm i think it's a good idea if it's an optional question so that it's not mandatory for someone to pick a box so we want to yes. finish the logo and then come back to it on the form sure yeah that's yeah. a good idea because i think i want to address what miss bridges was bringing up too so let's come back to the form i know we're a little bit all over the place today but this is a lot of exciting <laughs> <laughs> all at once yeah. um good thing the results of our mass humanities grant are not today i thought they were but they're not until the 19th we'll we'll know the fate of, <laughs> of that so um okay so alexis do you want to show us what you did and miss bridges your hand is still up was that um, for this or for the form? You're muted, Miss Bridges. No, I don't see that my hand is still up. It's down. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the iPad, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> problems with this one. All right, Alexis, take it away here. Well, so, and I'm okay if nobody agrees with me, but um, this is giving me Halloween. Um, it's It's not... This, this is not pleasing to me, but I'm okay with being alone in that. I, I can die on that hill. I'm all right with that. <laughs> so you, you prefer to keep the white lettering for the HRA? That is, well, I didn't say that. Um, oh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go full Pan-African flag colors. Like I'm, I'm sort of like, I guess my, my question would be, as as a graphic designer, if I see it, I'm like, why autumn? I don't I don't dislike autumn, but what does that got to do with me? <laughs> um, so I don't know that like like I was saying before, right? For, for me, especially in marketing and all that sort of stuff, images speak louder than words. Um, I don't even have to read HRA um, or even really think about it if they're all in those colors. I know it's Pan Africanism. Um, so I guess I guess that's always my mindset is like, how fast can we communicate this information and how hard does someone have to, does someone even have to read in order to know what this is about? Okay. Um, I see Dr. Shabazz and then um, Ms. Bridges and that's what I see right no, now. No, I should have lowered my hand. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, yep. no worries. Ms. Bridges? Now, mine says, I lowered my hand. Does it still show my hand as up? Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Tell me now. Now what is nope, it? Nope. You're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, so, okay. 
so why don't I present a couple versions um, from the designer and then we'll we'll finalize something because I, I think I understand what everybody has provided as feedback. And if there's anything else after the meeting, just text me and or email me, just me, and I'll make sure to pass that along. Does that work? All right. Okay, so let's go back to that form and then go back. And just to kind of give us process wise in terms of the rollout, the form is most important to finalize today in terms of the block party, because if we're going to start printing something with a QR code on it, um, so the form and the logo are really what we have to be sure of between now and tomorrow, the website, it's okay if it's not like everything perfect right now, because between now and Thursday, when anyone would be able to even see the website, um, will be able to update it. So let's kind of go in order, order. Uh, starting with, let's see again, um, what do I got here? Share, okay. Is this mine? Am I sharing or, there we go, okay. So um, another option, Dr. Shabazz, to address what you had said is, um the I think what Yvonne or Yvonne maybe pointed out to say like it could be an optional like so I can include something that allows people to free form so they could just we could ask the question in a way that allows people to go a little bit deeper into what they want to share with respect to that if they so choose as opposed to it being something they have to do to complete the form yeah, it, it's really not a biggie for me. And, and as I'm looking at it now back to the form, one thing I would say is maybe that should go up top, uh, whatever, how we're asking the, the designation as, uh, as Black uh, African heritage and, um, and be the first thing. And then the, the details of, you know, location and age and all of that can come, can come after that. But let me say this as well. I have a possible. I have a, a a proposal to address Herb's uh, question about registration. What about inclusion? And this being an inclusion form, saying that they have uh, asked to be included for purposes of the consultation uh, process with the with the African heritage community. So African heritage slash Black inclusion form. Is that what you're saying? I like that a lot. I don't know what other, what do other people, I see heads shaking. <laughs> uh, Ms. Bridges, I think you want to say something, but you're muted. I couldn't hear what he just said. What was the word? Inclusion. So it would say African heritage slash black inclusion form. As to say, like you're choosing to include yourself in this process of learning more about our work. I think that's is that right, Dr. Shabazz? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I and mean, I'm just responding to 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 uh, uh, our our fellow uh, colleague uh, Herb's concern of registration being a, a kind of a, a word he 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 had a bad reaction to, and instead proposing inclusion. Great. Do we have consensus on that? Excellent. Okay. Hala, does that work okay for you? Okay. We'll come back. I think um, Hala might be having trouble with her sound. So, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> um, maybe what you can do is put your hand up if, if it works okay for you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> mm. Yes, Yvonne. My only um, concern is Black inclusion. Does that work together in the same sentence? African heritage, Black inclusion form. Yes. Do we want to just say AHRA inclusion form? No. Yes. Okay, and then let's see how that would, let me just make sure. 
so for this, um, we would be saying then here, include yourself or, or, or how do you see, include yourself to learn more about a historical reparative justice initiative underway for residents of African heritage at Amherst, which kind of says it all because you're saying again it, that it's it's you're saying what it is. It's not unclear what it, what we're doing. I'm wondering if saying in I, I don't know if this is just me is saying AHRA inclusion form does that make it sound like they're going to be included in the assembly? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> oh goodness, we that was. That what if it's what if it's without assembly? What if it's a h r? <laughs> or, or how about consultation uh, inclusion consult consultation inclusion form? Meaning that they're being included in in our consultative process. Hmm. Enrollment is that better than a registration? Well, Irv's not yes. here, but but I thought his his reaction to registration. Uh, which might be the same as enrollment, enrollment. is that it's, yeah, it sounds, it sounds maybe too, I don't know, bureaucratic or like they're joining something rather than that it, they're, they're asking to be included in a process of learning and a process of, of consultation. But the form is really enrolling them with their information. So maybe enrollment would Maybe, Maybe so. Let's let's ask him. I don't have a problem with enrollment. We'll I think in, so. He had brought up like a mil, almost like a military reference is what I had. I thought he right, like the draft card, like, like the draft. draft. We're, gonna, that, we're gonna draft African heritage people. <laughs> well, that's been, <laughs> enroll, enrollment has been used in that. In I think that in that also. space too. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's true. Um. I mean, I don't worry that they would, you know, I, I don't know about that inclusion signals that we're including them in the AHRA, but if, if inclusion still works, um, consultation inclusion form. I'm looking in the thesaurus for registration and one of them is matriculation, which is more like for school, I'm guessing. All of these are are sort of the words that I guess Irv is trying to uh, um, avoid. I like I like inclusion. I just think you know we need to figure out how we're going to use it. Well, why don't we do this? Let's sit with it a little bit over the next hour or so, and then we'll. Um, as long, I mean, I guess the only question is we won't be able to get a full consensus on a word before these would need to go to print without meeting again. So, um, and given that Earth's not here, it's unfortunate. Um, but just hear that one option again, AHRA consultation inclusion form. So here, let me do this. Let me change this. Um, let's see here. Oh man, we're so you're in thinking, the back. You're we're thinking in the, we're in the back end. We're in the back end. Yeah, and I'm gonna actually send this to everybody. It, actually, you can get to it from the. Um, I think I'll, I'll make sure that you can. Um, okay, uh, a h a h r a consultation. And then let me show it to you. I mean, a little bit of the problem with this is you have to know what a lot of things are like. So HRA, let's say you know nothing, right? HR, what's HRA? Consultation, mm -hmm. consultation about what? Inclusion. <laughs> what, you know, what am I getting myself into here? What about, <laughs> what about exactly. information inclusion form? Because we're just getting at their information, right? We're just well, that to, that sounds better. Like, like it's a, it, we're just getting at their information, the, this first level. So how about it's just an in, information inclusion form or information form? You know what I mean? Instead of a people, registration. I this think is people just would understand that form. better. Right. It's just a form for information, right? 
A, well, but well, so the, and I don't want to speak out of turn for you, Dr. Shabazz, but I think the purpose of it was to get people to uh, take a step to give sort of their information as a way of becoming part of this process. So information works. So information and inclusion, works. the way that you have it there, inclusion also works because we're just including their information, right? If it's just an inclusion form, they're filling out their information so we can include it in something. Well, wouldn't they understand like that if you're putting information form and then they go down and see what what you're asking for, that just in layman's terms, I think they'd understand that better. I will they're I seeing what information they're putting in, like, um, you know, African, Black, African, what, uh, and the options about from they the already Caribbean know or whatever the they're putting that in there. Right, right. I, I like the inclusion form or inclusion information form. I, I like that because I agree with, I agree with Shabazz. Inclusion is, is active. You know, it's about sparking um, action, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I like inclusion. Why don't we have inclusion slash information form? I mean, I'm easy today. Y'all, y'all got me. A, I like that. I like that got too. Me at an advantage. I'm real easy today. And okay. I do we got you stop. on a good day. And I do have a hard stop in about ten minutes. I got a four o'clock yeah. class. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, let's just. We do need to do public comment before you leave. So I'm going to move to that. Um, I like what Ms. Bridges just said to do inclusion information. The only thing I just want to confirm is here, then it would say include yourself to learn more about a historical. Is that okay? All right, perfect. And then mm -hmm. uh, that's great. I tell, uh, Pamela, were you reminding me about public comment or? <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to pause this share. Let's see here. All right. So that was a great back and forth, I will say. We got some things done. That was great. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and call public comment and let me just read quickly. Okay. <clears throat> During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns, and residential ad address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair. And then the HRA will not engage in a dialogue, but we will be listening very closely. And if you would like to make a public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. Um, I think Mary had her hand. Oh, okay. That's okay. Mara's here. We'll do, we'll do them both. So <laughs> welcome Mara. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so I just have two comments from the Amherst community land trust for you. One is that the family that was chosen for the $125,000, um, subsidy for home purchase has actually taken a house that was donated to ACLT. So that subsidy is still available and we would love to have it go to someone of African American heritage. Um, and the application form, it can be found on the ACLT website under first time home buyers. And um, I think we decided we're just gonna do first come first serve since we didn't get many applicants the last time Anyways, and so the first person that gets a qualified application that's okay will get the subsidy. And they have six months to find a house that fits. And we may increase the subsidy available if there aren't any houses because house prices have gone up. And the second is that our annual, well, not our annual meeting, but our fall meeting will be held on October 15th from two to four at Mill River. And that will be a meeting with refreshments, talk about what we've done and where we want to go. And then there'll be a walk afterwards all together. There'll be a challenging one and a not so challenging one. So it should last till about four. There'll be more information coming out about that, but I just wanted to let you know. Okay. 
Thank you, Mara. Before you leave, I am going to just uh, break from protocol just for a second to ask for a clarification. Um, for the $125,000 subsidy, can you just say a little bit more, what exactly does that do for the qualified applicant? Um, that is applied towards the purchase of a home, which still has to meet the the applicant has to meet the um, qualifications of only earning 80% of the area mean income. And they're only allowed to pay a certain percentage of their income in order to um, have, so they can't buy a half million dollar home with that income because they wouldn't be able to afford it. So it has to be affordable and they have to meet the income um, qualification. And the people at Valley CDC are excellent down at Cabana at helping people work through what documentation they need. And there are guidelines at what the income levels are on the web page. Okay, great. And can it be a condo? That's my final question. Does it I think so? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. It's um, it's Community Preservation Act funds from a couple of years ago, but it wasn't used. The first, the first person couldn't find a home in her price range, and then the second took the other home. So, still available. What's the website? ACLT.com. I think. I think it's on. Uh, uh, no, dot org. AmherstCommunityLandTrust.org. And just thanks again for all the work that you're doing. I was talking to somebody yesterday at the District 1 meeting. It's just really amazing work that you're doing. So thank you. And thanks for keeping us involved. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yes, Mary. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, so excited to hear everything that's going on. It's uh, really, it's an exciting time. And um, so it just, I, I've been involved um, uh, uh, a little bit doing some writing and, and some speaking uh, for reparations for Amherst in, in the past and been involved with lots of white uh, Amherst residents who are interested in, in, in helping, supporting boots on the ground effort, et cetera. Um, I was thinking of, of people, these pe people who I've been involved with who want to be involved and the Engage Amherst uh, website, which looks like a, it's going to be a terrific. So I was wondering if, if um, AHRA is, is, uh, it has a mailing list, which could um, maybe get back to people or, or just get information out to people whenever there is something new on the um, website. So if there's, a, if there's a new article, if there's new research, if there's just anything um, that would alert them to, to get onto the website so that they could get informed. Is, is there anything like, like that in existence? Dr. Shabazz, I see you shaking your head. Do you wanna to speak to that? If I understood from, um when we had our meeting with Brianna Sunrid of about the engaged Amherst, it's not constant contact, but there is a kind of um, uh, process built in. I think it's maybe through Microsoft. I'm not sure the proprietary uh, thing, but there there is a way that those who engage with us through the Engage Amherst or as we build the email list uh, or the uh, address list, from the from the portal that we will have a way to constantly feed information about the next AHRA meeting about community forums about you know whatever we're sending out I think there is a a process uh, within Engage Amherst or that we can use to do that maybe maybe Dr. Young knows or um, Pamela Young knows or or maybe you know Michelle isn't wasn't there yeah, absolutely. So there are different functions, like, for example, um, if we use the idea generator, then they'll, they can register, they would register with a name and an email address, and then it is sort of gives permissions um, accordingly. 
But I think there's probably, Mary, a really specific way to actually have a mailing list um, that is like a call to action. My only concern right now is just um, sort of confusing that with the registration or with the inclusion portal um, for, so it's like sort of we're going through these steps. And just to be clear, one of the things, so Mary has been an extraordinary, extraordinarily supportive um, ally in all of the work that we've been doing and um, has been really looking for ways that she can organize other um, folks who want to get engaged and help in our process. And so we talked about um, having Mary next week on the agenda as an item um, to talk about how we want to strategize engaging um, folks that were not, not specifically African heritage folks, but everyone else in the community who may want to be boots on the ground, for example. Um, like I saw an opportunity where Mary could be coordinating with Cyrus and really helping um, for to coordinate that effort of getting out into the community. And so uh, Mary proposed some other really great ideas. And so Mary, I think what we'll do is kind of hold that for next week when you come back and then um, explore the, the piece about um, getting people signed up a little bit more with Brianna. Great, great. Because that's, you know, that's what I'm thinking about in this question too, just more broadly, how can people be informed on a regular basis so they can jump into action? Because there, there is an awful lot of interest that I'm finding. So good, I look forward to, to seeing you next week and thank you for this great work. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Mary. Um, okay, I don't see any other hands right now. And I know Dr. Shabazz has a hard stop. So I think it, the only other thing I wanted to mention is I was thinking about, and this would come out of my, this isn't like anything to do with our budget, but I was hoping to have some um, fun items at the block party to be able to offer out. And so was thinking about I have a friend who has a company basically that can make like, for example, little sanitizer bottles that would have our logo on them. Um, and just a couple items like that, that we might be able to give out for folks. Would everyone be okay if I made a decision on that as long as it's with the logo that we're all good with? Okay. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> Um, and does anyone know who's, is anyone know for sure they're going to be at the block party? I'm going to try to be there. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Yvonne, I'm going to circle back. I'm going to send an email to everybody about us getting a group picture. Um, I'll do a doodle poll just to make it easy and we'll find a date and um, really appreciate Dr. Shabazz. I don't know if that photographer that you have is available like at, at any other times, but um, otherwise I'm sure we can talk to the town and see what we can figure out. <laughs> Okay, um, so any other, um, let me just check the agenda. Um, Yvonne, I, I think you're about to say something. Oh, I was gonna say that um, I went to the website that Mara suggested, but it's not working. I oh. wanna be able to share that information to folks, but that website never loaded. And so I'm just trying to figure out what the, I guess I'll keep looking to see what yeah, the website and would be. I can connect. So I see it now. It's um, it's actually fully spelled out. So it's amherstcommunitylandtrust.org is what I'm seeing. And I'm trying to load, but maybe it's not loading. Yeah, it's you? not loading. It's not yeah. loading. You're yeah, right. So I, it's something on their end. Okay. I think Mara might still be here. Oh, her Mara's hand is up. Could we? Yeah. Pamela's on top of it. <laughs> it Go. loaded on my computer, but um, I'll I'll make sure that um, you get some contact information, Michelle, through you. So okay. You, okay. That would be great. Yeah. And yeah, I want to be able to move people in that direction. You know. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, if I could share something. Of course. So I'm showing you on my on the screen. This is the Amherst Town logo, and you can see the um, the similarity it it has with the logo of Harvard Law School. 
Um, and the Harvard Law School, because it had been determined uh, and shown through a, a, um, a work that came out in 2016, that the shield, that the Harvard image was based upon the family shield of Isaac Royal Jr., the slave trader, slave holder, who made so much monies and was, um, you know, and donated to, to Har Harvard College before he left the United States because he didn't support the American independence. So he went, he was loyal to the crown. And so he went back uh, to England. Uh, but this was the person who enslaved Belinda and left her no pension, no resources, whereby she then petitions the, um, uh, you know, for, for a pension. Um, and so they have changed, Harvard has changed, they've dropped the, the three uh, wheat baskets uh, in favor of this logo now. This is their new logo, but here we are in Amherst still replicating the Royal, the royal Shield. Uh, so that's just FYI. Do with it what you like, <laughs> but. That's really interesting. Wow. <laughs> Burn the wheat. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. Good, good stuff. If you would send that to us, Dr. Shabazz, if you get a chance, I think everybody would appreciate having that. Um, okay, so I'm not seeing, we didn't get to a couple of our other items because Irv had to leave. He's going to speak to us about the community survey. He had a meeting with Kerry at the Dunahue Institute, um, and we didn't get to see DBG funds, um, although I'm not sure there's too much to say right now, but uh, we could get to that for our next meeting. Um, so if there aren't any other member reports or any other comments. I just really want to say thank you so much. This was a, such a great meeting and they always are, but I feel we really work together. Thank you, Michelle. And thanks uh, to uh, your, uh, uh, your mother in love and um, in respect to, you know, the help that she extended. Absolutely. Pamela. Yes, please. Mary has her hand up. Is there something additional that she'd like to say or whether that was left over from before? So I'm just going to allow her to talk now. Yeah, perfect. Mary, did you? Sorry, oh. sorry that was, I just didn't take it down. Thanks for asking. All right, awesome. Um, and, you know, we did not approve the minutes that are on the agenda. We could do that really quickly if people had ha have had a chance to look at them. But if you haven't, have people had a chance to look at them? Okay. Um, so why don't we go ahead and quickly just approve those um, minutes. So I'm going to move to approve the minutes of... 516, 66, 610, 615, and 628. And this is a really good practice that we, for us to say in because it keeps people informed and they can always be amended. So is there a second? Second. Okay, I heard uh, Ms. Bridges second. And then uh, let's see, uh, Heather, Hala, <laughs> sorry, Hala. Okay, uh, Alexis. Okay, Yvonne. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Deborah? Second. Oh, you second. And you, yes. Okay. And uh, Dr. Shabazz? <laughs> yes. Okay. And I'm a yes. Oh, okay. See you, Alexis. <laughs> Good to see you. All right, everyone. Well, thank you. It was a great meeting. I'm going to adjourn at 3.51 p.m. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Pamela. <laughs>